Hi everyone, this is Space Toad, and this is going to be the last basic tutorial on the new gates and mechanics and stuff that has been introduced with Buildcraft 1 um, 300, sorry, and with so basically all of the functionalities. Now the question is how to craft these things, and as I've uh, explained already, these are intended to be used at uh, a later stage of the game, it's not a uh, thing that you have access to at the beginning, and you'll see why um, straight out. Let's get started. So I'm just going to use too many items to get whatever is required for the crafting recipes here. I'm going to need a lot of redstone as well and the uh, gears um, that should be it then I'll use uh, some engines and I'm going to make a very simple system to power the whole thing through conductive pipes um, and yeah and um, fuel let me whatever is required and I guess I need a tank to make everything happen properly i probably use some gates too just for the sake of it or gate okay, is good enough okay so again to craft uh, these things you need everything coming from deep in the ground namely diamonds, obsidian and redstone. Actually, if I don't have a crafting bench, I won't go far. Mm. Yep. So I'm placing my bench here. Um, the regular crafting table will not help you. That cannot craft any of this circuitry that I presented. For that, you need to have a dedicated crafting table, which is called an assembly table, which is crafted out of six pieces of obsidian, one diamond gear, one redstone, and one diamond, not just one. And this creates an assembly table. And actually we will create, sorry, a second one. Um, see later on why it might be interesting. Okay. Now if I place an assembly table somewhere, let's take here, I've got some space and I click on it, this new interface uh, is opened. Once again this is uh, an alpha release of Buildcraft, you can see that it's not complete, there's nothing written here, uh, there's some work to be done, but it's already pretty functional. So this looks a little bit different from the usual crafting bench. Uh, there is uh, this left part which looks like a regular inventory and the right part which is not clickable at the moment, not selectable. We're going to start crafting. If I add a redstone as you can see, there is this thing that's called redstone chipset that gets activated um, here. Now, the way this automatic crafting bench works is that you select things that you want it to craft and it's going to craft them continuously. So, if I click on it, I'm saying craft a redstone chipset and it's going to craft them as long as there is enough material to craft them. The problem is now it doesn't work because it needs to be operated by a laser actually engraving the chipset. The laser is another object uh, where is my crafting bench over here that I'm going to have to craft separately and actually it is possible to craft several of them and use them all on the same assembly table to speed up the process. So I'm going to create three 
lasers of four. I need two diamonds. Well, two diamonds per laser. And then a bench of redstone all around. Like so. And I've just created four lasers here. Uh, this laser needs to be placed next to the assembly table and they will need to be powered. So I'm just going to um, create a power system for my four lasers. As you can see they are pretty close. Uh, they could go up to five, um, five blocks, so three blocks is good. I'm placing the lasers in there. Now, the reason why I had gotten these other objects from too many items is that I want to create a very simple powering things in here. Um, okay, so this crafting table, these assembly tables are going to require uh, some power, some substantial amount of power to operate. This is another reason why uh, you would basically start to use this thing um, late in the process. And you actually don't need them um, straight out. A single and simple system do not require to have any extensive machinery and extensive logic to work out. So quickly using my magic bucket here I'm going to create a um, circuit here providing fuel to these various tanks and finally using some gates uh, to make the whole thing work. An iron gate on each of these engines saying if they are blue or green then activate them. Okay, this is something that we saw earlier. And here I'm just going to extract the liquid. You should be familiar with all of this if you already know Billcraft. And say that I'm sending signal there as long as there is liquid in the tank. So I'm going to start the engines which are going to send that power and as you can see that is already uh, that has already activated the lasers which are engraving the chipset in the table. Uh, the as of this release the lower power of the laser is red, the higher power is blue. So if there is anything below blue, that means that uh, there is a lack of power. If it comes up to blue, that means that there is too much uh, power or proper amount of power. And yeah, um, the chipset just popped out. Uh, there is no location to store the results at the moment in these tables, but I can add that easily, actually if I just place a chest next to it. Let me grab the chest. Is that this one? Mm, chest. Okay. And if I chests, chest, um, all smelted object will go directly to the chest. Get out. God, that's annoying. Um, I could have a pipe system to send out items as well. It's probably part of the thing that will get improved on this table. But anyway, this is the way it works for now 
in the alpha version. Uh, if I add a second table here with another chest and ask to smelt other things or similar things, then the laser will automatically at some point um, switch from one table to the other as uh, as long as the table is within reach, which um, is the case here. So if you have a lot of tables, the laser will be um, splitting themselves automatically from one table to the other. Okay, let's now dig into some more details in terms of recipes. So I've created uh, this redstone chipset. If I add them in the table, I can see that from this redstone chipset, I activated a new recipe, a new output with gates, and I can click on it. Now, as you can see, this is darker um, red than this lighter red, means that these two objects have been scheduled for uh, crafting, and the assembly table is going to craft the first one, then the second one, then go back to the first one again, etc, etc. And if we just wait for it... Okay, now it went to crafting the gate. Um, gate will be much slower to craft than redstone chipsets, because um, they are much more complex, but you'll get them uh, eventually, you may need additional engines to provide additional power and additional lasers to do these things uh, fast enough. Again, that's part of the challenges uh, in Beecraft, having this system working. Now, it's probably night. I should have prepared my bed already. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to see all the recipes that are available. The first recipes are for um, chipsets, which are here for building gates. They have no use uh, by themselves at the moment. It's a bit like gears, but for more advanced thing. So the levels are the usual levels for chipsets. You need to have redstone with iron, it's going to be possible to create redstone iron chipsets. Using gold, you will have redstone golden chipset, and finally, diamond will bring the most powerful kind of chipset, which is going to be the redstone diamond chipset. Obviously, um, the further you go in the chipset family, the more energy will be required to craft them. So let's just assume that I've got all of them here. Um, here we go. Now, the other thing that you can craft on these tables is pipe wire. So before looking at all the gates, uh, let's see, pipe wire. For that you need redstone, you need iron, and you will need some dye as well to decide on the colors that you want to craft. There is rose red, cactus green, um, lapis lazuli for the blue, and then dilieno yellow, for the yellow obviously. And if I add one of these things, I'm adding the corresponding pipe wire. And obviously adding all of them will add all of the potential possible wire that I can just schedule like so. And as you can see here, it's a lot faster to craft wire than to craft um, chipsets. Let's now craft gates. I get everything. So with a redstone chipset, I'm crafting um, a simple gate. Obviously, if I use a redstone iron chipset, I'm going to be able to craft iron and 
as well as around ore gates. For golden gates, I need a golden chipset as well as red pipe wire and blue pipe wire. Remember that these gates are able to interact with these two colors of wires. And finally, if I add a diamond chipset, I'm going to be able to craft uh, a diamond gate provided that I have green pipe wire as well as yellow pipe wire to wire the internal part of it. Um, this kind of gate is very expensive in terms of material. It is going to be very expensive in terms of um, energy as well. It's certainly the longest item to craft in Buildcraft 3.0.0 but again as you saw in the previous tutorial this is the most powerful gate and it really adds a lot of possibilities and we are now done with all the tutorials of Buildcraft. I hope that things are much more clear now. I'm maybe some maybe doing some other stuff showing up some uh, interesting installations but as for now you know all of the basic capabilities of the mode uh, once again this is advanced stuff you don't need that to play with buildcraft uh, all of the rest uh, is still working the same way anyway thanks a lot for having watched all of this tutorial I hope to talk to you soon and to show you some new exciting capabilities, but for now, bye-bye.